say x over 3 here. Okay. So you guys can't see, and I'll show share with you guys. Yes. Question? Somebody had a question? Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just writing some things down. So good morning to all of you. And we do have our audio. And uh, we're going to solve trig equations now with multiple angles. You might say multiple angles. Yes, multiple angles. So if you notice here, for every one of these examples here, the reason they say it's multiple angles is because this is no longer x. This is no longer x. It's actually 2x and 3x. This is x over 2, and this is like x over 3. Okay? Okay, you guys okay with that? And this is what they call the multiple angle solutions here. So now we're going to find, again, general solutions. There's no restricted domain. So this is under, under the idea of find what? All solutions, a.k.a. the general solutions. All right, so number one, if we said, okay, how do we solve this here, okay? So what I'm going to say to you guys is notice the following. This is now 2x again, okay? What I do personally, I let that 2x be a, a theta. So what I'm going to say here is, let theta be 2x, okay? So I'm going to try to find a, I guess we'll keep it with blue. That's fine. Let theta be 2x now. And you say, well, what do you do with that? You change the variable to theta. Okay, and so now we simply just solve for theta. Just like we did before. So now you say, oh, okay, that means I can add one to both sides, right? And now I get what? Sine theta is one. Okay, so that's kind of the first part that you do. And if I told you guys, remember this, these are some kind of special kind of solutions here or special questions, what I mean by that is I actually just go to the sine curve on these here. Um, let me make sure I do this. I don't know. There we go. Okay. So personally, I always go to the sine curve, or I think of the sine curve to get my solutions here. Right? We graph these curves. This is one of the reasons why we did that. So, ah, there it is. If you guys remember here. So, sine theta happens. Where does that happen? That happens when theta is what? This is your theta, right? This is 1. This is negative 1. So, this happens when theta is simply pi over 2. Okay, you guys okay with that? And I go, oh, okay. I know when that happens. Theta is pi over 2. So if I bring in the all students take calculus picture for you guys. Okay, you might say, well, where is this, where is this particular solution, right? Where is this? Well, 90 degrees. So this is a 90 degree angle right up in here, okay? That's the angle. That's your solution here. 
Okay, that's your theta, 90 degrees. You guys agree with that? So you say, okay, there's my theta solution. Theta is 90 degrees. Now, how do I get all the other solutions since this is find all solutions? <coughs> how do we get the general solutions? You guys remember? With that solution, right? You say my theta is power over two. I'm gonna have to add a multiple of two n pi. Is that true? To get all the other solutions, because this isn't like opposite solutions anymore. You're gonna have to, to get all the other solutions for this. Remember that, you're gonna have to rotate this. Oh, one rotation, two full rotations, three rotations in both directions, right? Both clockwise and counterclockwise. So that's why we need the multiple of two n pi Again, n is an integer, and I could just put n. This is a shortcut for saying n is an integer. n is an element of the integers. And now you say, okay, Mr. Judge, that's great. This is like we, this is everything we've been doing. We already know that already. And I'll say, okay, but what we don't know, or what we should remember, is what was theta anyway? Theta was what to begin with? Theta was 2x. So we're going to have to go back now and say, oh yeah, I'm gonna have to remember that theta is 2x, which means replace your theta with 2x, okay? And then remember this, we have to solve for x. So we gotta divide both sides now by what? By two to solve for x, because this is all solutions for the x variable. Right? They give you, this is find all solutions. That's going to be a 2x here. So we're going to have to find x is what they mean by that. What's the value of x? So, okay. Now, just do your, your distributive property with your algebra here, right? That 2 is dividing now both terms, right? Because you say, well, what, what property is that from algebra? Well, let's do some s. What is this from S? A plus B over C is going to equal what? AC plus BC. X is power over 2 divided by 2 plus what? And pi. And then that means power over 2 times what? One half plus m pi. So here's your first solution, ladies and gentlemen. Pi over four plus what? M pi n is an integer. So there you go. There it is. Okay, you guys okay with that? Oh, what does this mean here? Yeah. Okay, you see this statement here. So if you said, what in the world is this, right? That's another fancy way of saying N is an integer. Okay, that's like N is an element of the integer set. So that's a very fancy way of saying n is an integer. Okay, so it's like a shortcut. You go, oh my gosh, it's a, I don't have to write down the phrase n is an integer. I could put n is an element of the z set, which is the integer set. Yes, you can do it that way. Or you could just write down n as an integer. So, you know, either way is fine. But the point is, ladies and gentlemen, you really just do a what? Substitution of the variables. So like number two, you say, what if they give me this? It's the same thing. So I'm gonna copy that, bring it down. Okay, you're gonna substitute now. You're gonna let theta be three X, right? So theta is gonna be now three X. T 
2 cosine theta plus 1 is 0. Okay. You can subtract 1. 2 cosine theta is negative 1. Divide 2. And now you get this cosine theta is going to equal negative what? 1 half. Okay. So you're in the situation. Remember this. This is cosine. It's negative 1 half. So you're going to have to find theta. So in other words, this all comes down to change the variable and now solve for theta in the way you've already done. So in the way we've done this, here's the thing. You're going to now have cosine theta being positive 1 half. Okay, you're going to bring out that reference angle. There's your reference angle. Okay. Now, what's the definition of cosine? Do you guys remember? This is adjacent over what? Hypotenuse. So where's the adjacent side? One. Where's the hypotenuse? Two. This is square root of three. Okay, you guys okay with that? Isn't that your special triangle that you have to... There's only two... So what angle does that mean that, that reference is? Isn't that going to be what? 60 degrees? Is that right? So that's pi over 3. So here's my, here's my reference angle information there. Right? So we say, okay, but cosine is supposed to be not positive. Cosine's negative. We've got to find the quadrants in which cosine's negative. Okay. So let's see if we can bring that in. Sixty degrees here. So where is cosine negative? Do you guys know what quadrants do you find a negative cosine? Quadrants what? Quadrants two, quadrants three. Is that true? Because remember, what's the phrase for all students take calculus? That means in quadrant two, sine is positive. That's why there's an S. That means cosine and tangent are negative. So you will have a solution here and a solution where? Over here. These are where cosine is negative. The reference, remember your reference angle. What was the reference angle? It goes right here. Reference angle was what? 60 degrees or pi over 3? If you guys remember that. Okay, so what that now means is theta for a quadrant two solution, what do we know? Isn't that pi minus your reference angle, pi over three? Okay, and then quadrant three is pi plus the reference angle of pi over three. And I might have to just move that here. Okay. So what do you do here now? This is going to be what? 3 over 3. 3 over 3. So your angle here is going to be 2 pi over 3. And this is 4 pi over 3. All right, you guys okay with that one? Quadrant two, quadrant three. 
Now, notice your solutions are not in opposite quadrants, are they? So they're not in opposite quadrants. So you say, what happens if they're not in opposite quadrants? Well, if they're not in opposite quadrants, we have to add multiples. In other words, <laughs> excuse me, 2 pi over 3. Since they're not in opposite quadrants, we can't add multiples of n pi. You have to add multiples of what? 2 n pi, n is an integer. Right? You only add that n pi if it has solutions in opposite quadrants. So here we go. So now you want to remind people what was theta to begin with. Theta was what? 3x. So replace this theta with 3x. Okay, replace theta with that 3x. So now you can solve for what? All right, remember, theta is 3x. Solve for x. Divide left, right, middle by 3. Cancel. Use the algebra. You're distributing your division by three. This one, we just keep this as, as it is. Okay, so this is, becomes two pi over three times one third plus two and pi over three. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is just like we've been doing, except this, this small step now, we get 2 pi over 9 by arithmetic plus 2 and pi over 3 here. All right, <clears throat> so this is how you handle the multiple angle situation. So, so now, again, on the left, we get the cancellation. On the right, we distribute the division by 3. So, I mean, if you wanted to see that extra step, you go, I like seeing that division by 3 here. Remember, n is an integer. Okay, you can say n is an integer as well. So that's kind of, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, this is kind of what happens now when you have this um, situation. Multiple angles. And this... The same technique works if you have x over 2, like this fraction or something here. x over 2. Same thing works. So, ladies and gentlemen... Subtract 1 from both sides, you now get tangent x over 2 is negative 1.
Okay, so remember, what do you do if it's if it's not x by itself? What do you guys do there? Right? You're going to let this be your theta. Is that right? It's your theta. Let theta be what? X over 2. So now you really have the equation of tangent theta is negative 1. So you're going to change the variable. And then you're going to change it back. That's all. Change the variable and then change it back. So do you guys know you're going to need the reference angle? And sometimes by now, some of you guys may say, you know what, Mr. Judge, by now I know this process. Yes, tangent theta is negative 1. I go to the reference angle, tangent theta is positive 1. When does that happen? Do you guys remember? Remember this? This is going to be what? Opposite over adjacent? Do you guys know about this one? Opposite over adjacent, is that true for tangent? That means this has to be square root of 2. So what angle is this? What's that going to be? Pi over 4. Right? So all students take calculus because you need the negative angle, right? So you gotta find what quadrants tangent is negative. So you're gonna go, you're gonna bring that stuff in again. And so, you know, kind of by now, you might say, wow, I think I know what quadrants is your tangent negative, but we say all students take calculus. Do you guys know what quadrants? Where is tangent negative? Well, in quadrant two, that means sine's positive. So that means cosine and tangent are negative. Is that right? Quadrant four, cosine's positive, which means sine and tangent are negative. So ladies and gentlemen, Your reference angle in purple, this is pi over what? Four. Your reference angle here in purple, pi over four. So this is not x, this is theta, right? So, so remember, a quadrant 2 solution is pi minus the reference angle. If you guys remember that. So this is going to be what? 3 pi over 4. What about the opposite quadrant solution? Do you guys know? This is going to be what? 
2 pi minus the reference of pi over 4. And multiply the top and bottom by what? 4. So you get a pi over 4 minus pi over 4, and this is going to be 7 pi over 4. All right, you guys okay with that? This is where tangent is negative one. So now you might say, right, we're find, trying to find where tangent theta is negative one, but now what do you guys want to do? You want to you want to go back now, right? Oh, I'm sorry, we're not done. We're not done. We need the general solution here. So remember this. If you just take this first solution here, Right, we need the general solution. So I'm gonna start with the three pi over four. Do you guys remember? Because I have solutions in opposite quadrants, they're directly opposite. There's the there's the there's the next solution. There's the next solution. They all differ by what? Doesn't matter how I rotate, is that right? These solutions differ by this is what again? Pi. So I take the first solution of 3 pi over 4, and now, because solutions are in opposite quadrants, we need to say just n pi, n is an integer. So ladies and gentlemen, we get the opposite quadrant solutions. Okay, you guys okay with that? Isn't that what you do before, right? Okay, so what's the difference now? You say the only difference now is theta is x over 2. We got to change the variable back. So I'm just going to say here, this is now going to be, change it back, let, let that theta be x over 2 like it was originally, okay? And all of what I write down here, I'm just going to copy, place it here. All we got to do now is what? What do we do now this time? Just multiply both sides by what? By 2. This now says what? X is going to be 6 pi over 4 plus 2n pi, just simplify the 6 pi over 4, and that's 3 pi over 2. And remember, n is an integer. So, ladies and gentlemen, here you go. This is how we solve these trig equations when you have what's called multiple angles here. Okay, just change the variable back and solve for x, that's all. Change the variable to begin with and go back. And these are all the solutions here, so anyway. So it's an exercise here in these multiple angles here. Zero plus one is one. Divide both sides by two. You guys remember this? This is what we've been doing. So now we need sine x over three is gonna be what? One half. Okay, so what do we do now here, right? With x over three, what do we do there? That's gonna be our theta. So let theta be x over 3. 
And now sine theta is one half. Okay, so you're going to solve this like you've been doing that. Remember, this is positive here, though. What's the definition of sine? Opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, then this has to be what? Square root of 3, is that true? Right? Remember, there's only two special triangles you guys need to know. What is this going to be here? What's that going to be? This is going to be what? Anybody know? So is that um, 30 degrees or 60 degrees? 30 degrees, outstanding, is that right? Pi over six, okay. These are our solutions. So, ladies and gentlemen, now you say, what do we do with this now? We're going to have to sign as positive here, right? So, there's going to be two quadrants where sign's positive. There's two quadrants where sign's negative. We got to find where sign's positive. Do you guys remember what quadrant that might be? If I start to think all students take calculus, what quadrant would that be in? Right? All students take calculus. Here we go. Bring that in. Oh, I hate when that happens. All right. Okay, so sine is positive, right? In quadrant what? Where's sine positive? Quadrant one, always quadrant one. That's a reference quadrant. Quadrant two. So you found the first solution. Right? This is theta is 30 degrees. We now need the second solution in quadrant two. So I'll, I'll use reference quadrant colors. Okay. So we need a quadrant two solution. So how do we get that? Pi minus what? The reference. Is that true? Okay, you guys okay with that? And then do your little trick with algebra. This is six over six. So what is theta gonna be now here? Theta is gonna be what? Five pi over six? So I wanna emphasize an important detail here. Okay. What you guys are looking at is you're looking at two solutions, a quadrant one and a quadrant two solution, because sine's positive. Are these opposite quadrant solutions? Say no. If they're not opposite quadrants, then what do you guys do? Do you guys remember for the general solution? If they're not opposite quadrants, then you're going to have to write down both and add the 2n what? Pi. So add your 2n pi. n is an integer. We can say that for both here. n is an integer here. So you're going to have to, because these are not in opposite quadrants. They're quadrant 1 and 2. They're in adjacent quadrants. So when they're adjacent, you always have to add the multiple 2n pi. But don't forget, you say, don't forget what? What was theta to begin with? Theta was x over 3. So you say, what do I do now with this? Well, 
go back and let theta be what? x over 3. Multiply left and right by what? Three. So distribute the three, okay. Is that right? To both of these, you're going to distribute here algebra. Multiply both by three. Okay, multiply both by three, is that right? You're gonna distribute, you're using, you say, Mr. Judge, what algebra? This is an S course. A, B plus C distributive property. That's A, B plus A, C, is that right? Multiply both terms. This is the algebra. So it just so happens that the first equation Right? 3 over 6. You guys know what 3 over 6 is? Isn't that going to be what, 2? You get pi over 2 plus what? 6m pi. n is an integer, ladies and gentlemen. So this is how you handle the multiple what? Angle scenario. Okay, you guys okay with that one? Multiple angles. Now, we also can use identities. So we do have a whole bunch of identities that I'll, you know, that you guys remember we talked about. And for example, they can give us sine x equals Sorry, I'm going to say sine 2x equals tangent 2x. Okay, so they can kind of throw in these multiple identity, kind of, these identity questions here. Now, before you do that, though, what do we want to do? If you guys notice, you say, wait a minute, but these are multiple angles. They are. Okay, let that be theta. Let this be theta. So we can start the process by just changing this, changing the variables to theta. You get sine theta equals what? Tangent theta. So you might say, Mr. Judge, what identity, if they say use what? 
use identities. How do we use identities here? Is there any identity you guys know we can use? What identity can we use here? Is there anything? You know anything about tangent? Can I write tangent as what? Sine over cosine? Do you guys know some of your identities here? So what I want to remark here is for some of these, yes, we can start to use some of our identities here. So all I did was replace here, ladies and gentlemen, tangent with sine over cosine, because that's an identity. Right now, now you might say, what do you do with this now here? Well, ladies and gentlemen, here's what you guys are going to do. You're going to have to use some algebra. What I mean by that is multiply both sides by what? By cosine. So on the left, you're going to get what? Sine times cosine, and then cosine is going to cancel, and that equals sine here, okay? You guys know what I'm talking about here, right? So now you might say, well, what do I do with this? Well, you're going to subtract your sine from both sides. We'll get sine cosine minus sine equals zero. Okay, and now what you guys can do is you take this what? Factor out your sine. <coughs> sine, now cosine minus one equals zero. So this is the algebra you need to do here. Okay, because we factored out that sign. Is that true? You guys see how the sign is here? Now, what do we use? I'm going to ask you guys from algebra here. What do we use here now? We actually already talked about it. We already did it. What do we use with this? Some of these questions are using identities here. Uh, what do you guys think we do? Outstanding. We're going to use the what? The zero product rule. Yep, you got to use that zero product rule. Right, so you say, well, what is the zero product rule? Do you guys remember? Should I write it down? Okay, I'm going to write that down. If you ever have the product is zero, then what does that mean? That means A is zero or what? B is zero. Here's your algebra. You're using the, the zero product rule, okay? And when I gave you guys that the other day, if you guys remember, what did I do? I changed my colors. Is that right? Sometimes it's easy for people to see it this way. So I use, I use the orange and green. All right, you guys get with that? So that means sine theta equals zero or... Cosine theta minus 1 is 0. Okay, you can add 1, and now you have cosine is 1. So, so what I want to say here, though, is now notice this. This is for me, if I ever see like co uh, sine theta is 0 or 1, or cosine theta is 0 or 1, or if I say to you, if it's negative 1, so I see 0, 1, negative 1, if it ever equals those things. What do you guys always do? Go back to what? Go back here. 
draw your sine curve and get used to this because I remember when I was a student, I used to see this all the time in my science courses. Okay, because sine, where is sine actually zero? Do you guys remember? I actually gave this to you guys on a, on a test and a lecture and a worksheet. That's, code, that's finding the intercepts. Is that right? Isn't that the intercepts? This is theta, and that's just for sine. When does that happen? When theta is zero, when theta is what? Pi, and when theta is two pi. This is the definition of, of, your, of your intercepts. So generally speaking, how can I write this in general? Can I just say n pi? n is an integer, ladies and gentlemen. You guys with me on that? Just looking at the graph? n pi forever because they want the general solution. So those are this is like 0 pi over here if you wanted to think of it. 0 times pi. And this is just a, the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So you got 0... 1 pi, 2 pi, and so on. You got the negative solution. So this is the general solution here. Wherever sine is 0, so you get 0 equals n pi. Now, you say, what about the cosine of cosine being 1? Well, draw the cosine curve. So if I copy all this, so I don't have to... Do it again. Draw the cosine curve. That's a different curve. So where is cosine? This is your cosine curve, right? Where is cosine 1 now? They're not at the intercepts. They're where? For what values? Don't forget, this is 2. Somehow the 2 fell out, right? So cosine theta, cosine theta is 1. We're trying to find these solutions now. So where is cosine 1? Can you guys see it on the graph? That happens when theta equals 0 and theta equals what? 2 pi. Is that true? So what do you guys notice about the pattern here then? How would we write the general solution here? Anybody know? So you can say this is going to be 2 and pi, is that right? Okay. However, let's go back. Let's actually do this. Let's kind of think about this here, okay? Can we do this a bit better? And the answer is yes. Okay, if you're looking back at the book, you might get confused, and I'm going to show you why you're going to see the answer the way you, you see it. Sometimes the people who write these solutions, they're very efficient. And I'm going to bring this all students say, take calculus, okay? I guess I have to leave it like that, okay? So let me go back a bit and say, let's focus on these solutions. 0 pi, 2 pi. Okay, you guys with me on that? Let's see if we can do a little, little bit better. Isn't this 0? And isn't this what? Pi. So if I want to do it this way here, let me actually try to do some colors here, okay? And here's what I want to remark here. I'm going to keep these solutions here orange. 
So if I said to you, these are the sign solutions. Zero. Where is this? Pi. And then also what? Two pi. Right? This is for sine. Is that true? Zero, pi, two pi, and so on. And then what about the solutions here for cosine is one? I'm going to use green. Okay? So you say in green, what are the solutions here? Well, in green, zero and two pi. So here's my solutions here for zero. And it's also my solution for two pi. Is that right? So what are you looking at? You're looking at really, in some ways, the solutions together. So if I said to you, can you very elegantly write this as a solution, one solution? You know what you can do? I can say, you know what? Take the zero degrees. Isn't it zero for both? And then I can say, just add the opposite solution, n pi. So you're really looking at everything all together here because this differs by what? By pi, is that right? They're opposite solutions. So if you look in back of the book and you say, hey, Mr. Judge, why in this situation they just have, well, what's zero plus anything? Why do they just have n pi for all of these here? Right? n is an integer. Why do they have that? Because if you look at the solutions graphically this way, you get this opposite solution here. And you go, whatever happened to my 2n pi? Well, even is already there with n pi. So the way I explain this here is you have the, these are all my green solutions here. And it's graphically there. 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, they're all even. And these here in orange, these are all my sine solutions here. But all together, as one nice, elegant solution, this is what you guys see. Just n pi. Okay, you guys okay with that? You guys see the point? So you're going to have to draw those solutions, and if you see them as opposite, don't get like you're going to look in back of the book and you only see this and you conclude you did everything wrong and you didn't. You just didn't summarize it uh, efficiently. And so now you might say, but what was theta to begin with? Because we're not done. What was theta? Theta was what? 2x. So if theta is going to be 2x here, ladies and gentlemen, we do that. What do we do? We said we change the variable back now. I'm going to replace my theta now with what? With 2x. So you get now this 2x is n pi. n is an integer. Divide both sides by 2. x is now going to be what? n pi over 2. And... I think I want to write that in black again because it's kind of like the final, you know, final solution. Um, n pi over 2. n is an integer. And there it is. There is the, there is the lone solution here for this here, ladies and gentlemen. And that's just by starting to use, like we say, these identities here um, to solve some of these here. So let me try to go back here. What's going on? Anyway. Okay. How about, how about, let me do this here. Sorry, let's change it on you guys. Mm. 
Yeah. How about the following? 2 sine squared minus cosine equals 1. Okay, and we're supposed to use some identities on this, right? All right, what do you guys think you could do? What identity? Because here's a problem here. Do you guys know what a problem is? If you're going to solve this, what you, what you really need is everything in terms of sines and cosines. Okay, we need everything in terms of sines and cosines. The problem is you have, you have what here? Sine squared and you have cosine. What I mean by sines and cosines has to be only sine and only cosine in that sense. This is really what's going on. Here's what I'm going to suggest you guys do. You see sine squared? I can replace this with what? 1 minus cosine squared. I'm going to get this all in terms of cosines. This is your Pythagorean identity. Do you guys remember the Pythagorean identity? So by the Pythagorean identity, you have 2 times 1 minus cosine squared. Minus cosine equals 1. You can now distribute here. So you get 2 minus 2 cosine squared minus cosine equals 1 now. Okay, so now I can... Let me subtract 2 from both sides. You guys can see what I'm going to get here. If I subtract 2 from both sides, I get minus 2 cosine squared minus cosine equals negative 1 here. Just using some algebra. Okay? So, you guys can maybe see where I'm going with this. I'm going to make this one side equal to zero by adding one to both sides. Okay. And you might start to say, do I have an, I, do I have like a quadratic equation? And I'll say, yes, you have like a quadratic. Okay. So multiply both sides by a negative because I don't like to factor here with that negative term. We're going to distribute there again. So negative 1 times negative 2, that's positive 2. We're going to distribute. Negative times a negative is positive. Positive times a negative is negative. So ladies and gentlemen, you're going to end up with a nice quadratic equation in terms of cosine. So you, this is what they mean by use some identities here. Change this to a cosine squared, not a sine squared. So you now have a nice quadratic equation here, okay, in terms of cosine. Because you're going to let now, like we did yesterday. Remember, we did something like this yesterday. This is t. You say, what do you mean t? You're going to let t be your cosine curve. So that gives you 2t squared now plus t Minus 1 is 0. You're going to get to factor this like we did yesterday. Okay, do you guys remember how to factor this here by any chance? Remember, remember factoring? Should we do the crisscross method? Do you guys remember this is A, this is B, this is C. So you take AB, you're going to multiply, I'm sorry, you take AC, 2 times negative 1 
Isn't that going to be negative 2? You're going to take these two terms. 2 times negative 1. So if you guys forgot the crisscross method. So 2 times negative 1, isn't that negative 2? Isn't your B positive 1? This is now your B term. We now need two numbers multiplied together, which is negative 2. We need the product, the product, if you guys remember that crisscross, is negative 2, and the sum is 1. We need this. So what is this going to be, ladies and gentlemen? What numbers? Two numbers multiplied together is negative 2 when added as 1. Isn't that positive 2 times negative 1? 2 times negative 1, isn't that negative 2? And then 2 plus negative 1 is 1? So by the crisscross method, ladies and gentlemen, here's what you guys do here, if you guys remember this. These numbers that you found right in here, okay, they go where? This is going to be right here, plus 2 minus 1, okay? Okay? your crisscross method for factoring. But the problem is right here. You got A is 2. So if you guys remember, you'd be done if A, because A is not 1. A is actually 2. You would be done if that was a 1. It's over with the crisscross method. So you always divide those two numbers we got by 2. And what we want is like a nice whole number. And in the case where we get 2 over 2, well, that's 1. This case here, ladies and gentlemen, is not a nice whole number, right? 1 half. Do you guys remember what you do with that 2? What do you do? You bring it up. You get 2t minus 1 equals 0. t plus 1 is 0, 2t minus 1 is 0, right? Subtractor 1, t is negative 1. Isn't this a zero product rule, ladies and gentlemen? Right? Divide both sides by 2. So you're going to use here, if you guys remember, this is going to be the zero what? Product rule. This is the whole purpose of factoring. The whole purpose of making this equal to zero on one side and getting a quadratic, right? That's the whole reason you did it. And now you remember you say, what is T? Cosine. Okay, so what you have is now cosine is negative one. And we have cosine is positive one half. Okay. So you just factor this after you did your substitution. All right. So if we said, remember I just got through sharing with you guys this kind of idea, right? If I have cosine or sine equal to 0, 1, or negative 1, I always go to the graph. So if I go to the graph for cosine being negative 1 now, I think we already have the graph, don't we? Where is cosine negative 1 at? What angle? Isn't that where cosine is negative 1? 
What angle is that? Is that pi? Good. So we say what? What do we say? This was x. It's not theta. We didn't have to do a substitution. So that only happens when x is pi, okay? You guys see, see what I'm saying? You do see that curve a lot, sine and cosine. Okay, so there's your there's your solution for cosine. We're going to have to find the general solution, but that's what we find first. Okay, what about this? What's the definition of cosine? Isn't this adjacent over hypotenuse? One, two, square root of three. Is that right? So what's your solution for cosine being one half? Hey, that's not a right triangle. We want to draw a right triangle. What angle is that, ladies and gentlemen? Is that going to be what? 60 degrees? Is that true? I didn't write 60 degrees very well. Or that's pi over what? Is that pi over 3? Double check. Is that what we get, pi over 3? 60 degrees, you guys okay with that one? Okay, you guys. All right, now let's go back to all students take calculus. We got all the information to deduce our answers here in general. Okay, let's get that out. There you go, all students take calculus now. Pi, we already know that one, but pi over 3, because cosine is positive, you guys remember this? Where's cosine positive? Quadrant 1, quadrant 4. All students take calculus. What do we say it was? 60 degrees, right? So my first solution here, pi over 3, a quadrant 4 answer is 2 pi minus pi over 3. Six pi over three minus pi over three. So this is gonna be five pi over three. Is that true? And don't forget, what was the other solution here? Isn't that when x is pi? Okay. Do you guys see what we're saying here? We're looking at this information. This is where cosine is negative 1 when x is pi. So you're really looking at, if you wanted to see this with highlighted arrows, you're looking at a situation where what? What is the picture telling you? Are any of these solutions in opposite quadrants or opposite? None are, is that right? None of them. So you don't have the opposite situation with any of these solutions. I'm going to put them all in one place so you guys can see that here. So you know what that means? Do you guys know what that means? If none of them are opposite, it means the best we can do is say this. X1, pi over 3, plus 2n pi. We want to get all solutions. X2, 5 pi over 3, plus what? 2n pi. 
pi plus what? 2m pi. Because all of them, to get the coterminal solutions, have to be rotated full revolutions, both clockwise and counterclockwise, you know, multiples of 2 pi, full revs. Now, this situation here, you might say, hey, Mr. Judge, I looked in the back of the book, and they put x3 to b. They factored out. You know what they did? They factored pi out, and they have 2m two, two pi plus 1. Okay. N is an integer. So you're going to see in back of the book this solution, this solution, and this solution. All right, you guys okay with that? You guys see what I'm saying? Because they factored out this multiple here of pi, and that's why we have a 2n pi plus 1 or 1 plus 2n, however you want to write it. And yes, n has to always be an integer. Do you guys know what integers are again? Just to remind you, the set of integers are the numbers that look like this. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and, you know, so on. They're your integers. All right, you guys okay with that? So, ladies and gentlemen, just to kind of remind you guys, if I go over 